This problem involves a simple frame built of two bars. The purpose of the frame is to support a weight W and the weight is attached to a pulley and the pulley is attached to the frame and also there is a cable involved. The horizontal dimension of the truss is 2L and the inclined angle theta. Our task is to determine the forces acting on the two bars. This is a relatively simple frame. On the other hand, you will see that there is an interesting twist in this problem. So I begin solving this problem by going through routine steps of putting the frame apart and drawing appropriate free body diagrams. I will do it first by removing the supports. Now I will separate the bars and the pulley, the cable, and the weight. This is certainly not the only choice of free body diagrams, but it is a simple one and certainly a natural one. Now let me consider free body diagram for the individual components. I will start with the vertical bar. At A there is a pin and therefore I put two forces. Then the frame is connected to the cable and therefore there is a force D applied at the connection point. At the top of the vertical bar there is a pin and I show two forces Bx and By. Now I'll proceed with the inclined bar. First at B there are two forces that are connected to these two forces and therefore they are shown in green and of course by the third law this force is opposite of this one and this one is opposite of this one. Then I proceed to the pin. There are two forces and at the right end of the inclined bar there is a roller therefore I show force dy. Now I will conclude by showing the free body diagram for the third component. I'll start with the weight W then I show the force T that is consistent with this force and then I will show the forces Cx and Cy which are consistent in terms of the third law with the forces Cx and Cy shown for the second component. Now I'm ready to proceed and analyze components by components. I will start with the pulley and the block and the cable. Here I show the red force W because it's known. The blue forces are unknowns and if I write three equations for three unknowns I obtain that of course the tension in the cable is equal to the weight and the forces Cx and Cy are equal to minus W. Now with the forces Cx and Cy known I proceed to the free body diagram for the inclined bar here I show a little cartoon of the original structure so that we understand the dimensions and where equilibrium equations are coming from. Uh, this free body diagram involves three unknowns Bx, By and Dy and now the forces W and W are known. The corresponding equilibrium equations involve some of the forces on X, some of the forces on Y, and I will take some of the moments about B so that this equation will deliver me 
dy. If I solve these equations for the unknowns, I obtain the forces bx, by, and dy. And now I'm ready to complete the problem by going to the last free body diagram. Now, if I look at this free body diagram, I recognize there are only two unknowns, AX and AY, and I have to satisfy three equilibrium equations. Furthermore, if I look at some of the moments about the point A, I immediately recognize that some of the moments about A is not equal to zero simply because these two forces form a couple and there is nothing to balance this couple. Thus, I arrive at a contradiction. This contradiction can be resolved if we go back to the original free body diagrams and start with counting the unknowns. And what we see that the unknowns are associated with the number of the blue forces. The red forces are knowns, and the green forces are related to the blue forces through the third law. So we have five unknowns coming from the first component and additional three components coming from the second component. So the total count of unknowns is equal to 8. On the other hand, we have to satisfy nine equilibrium equations. So there is clearly a lack of balance. And uh, one way to balance this situation is, for example, to introduce a force dx. This will make nine components, nine unknowns, for nine equations. Now, what does it mean in terms of the original structure? In effect, what I do is I remove the roller and I replace it with a pin support. Uh, you may take a look at this structure and see whether this solution is satisfactory for you. How you feel about it, what you think about it. At the same time, what we can do, we can go back and look what we get in terms of equations. So, what I will do, I will not uh, consider the free body diagram involving the rope, the pulley, and the weight, simply because this change does not affect it. Rather, I will consider the free body diagram for the inclined bar, and you can see now that there is an additional force, dx, and I will write down equilibrium equations and this time I will write down equilibrium equations using D as the pivot for the moment equation. Now I have here four unknowns and I can write only three equations. I'm not going to el eliminate any of the unknowns Rather, I will proceed with the remaining free body diagram for the vertical bar, where I also have four unknowns and three equations. In this case, I will continue using A as the pivot. Now, what I need to do, I need to solve six equations for six unknowns. A convenient way of doing it is 
to choose the equation strategically. Let me pay your attention to the moments equations. This equation I chose in such that the unknowns in these equations are the forces Bx and B1. And that is the main reason why I decided to use the point D rather than the point B in writing down some of the moments equation for the inclined bar. Furthermore, in this case, the last equation is particularly simple because it yields directly B sub X. And therefore, I can solve these two equations for two unknowns. Once I have the forces Bx and By, I can go back to the force equilibrium equations and recover the forces at D and A. Let me summarize the results. And in doing this, I will show the free body diagrams for all three components. And on these free body diagrams, I will show forces that take into account positive and negative answers. Right? So all the forces are directed so that they show the actual direction of the force rather than along positive x and along positive y as we have chosen initially. Also, it is instructive to have a quick check on the solution. One way to do it is to look at the free body diagram for the entire structure. Of course, since we have equilibrated every single component of the structure, we expect that the free body diagram for the entire structure will be in equilibrium for forces that are shown here. Indeed, if I collect the forces at the supports and the external force W, I obtain the following free body diagram. Please verify that this free body diagram involves forces that are self-equilibrated. In other words, if I decide to write down equilibrium equations for this free body diagram, I will find that all three equilibrium equations are satisfied Alternatively, I can say that the free body diagram for the entire body does not lead to any new information. Thank you.